Hey everyone, welcome to Compline for tonight, Friday, July the 3rd. Tonight is our 109th Compline, keeping the street alive. Glad to join you all for worship tonight. Welcome Heidi, blessings to you. How was your day, Heidi? Hey, Carrie and Curtis, welcome to you guys. Joe and Barb, blessings. Welcome. Hey, Carrie. Uh, so tonight our psalm will be psalm number 80. I think for our song, our campfire song. Hey, Joanne, welcome to you. Blessings, blessings, Katika. Welcome. Uh, I think for our song tonight, we'll sing um, Kumbaya, but a little uh, jazzed up version that I learned at camp one million years ago. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Hey, Rose, blessings to you and Dave. Uh, and yeah, our psalm is Psalm 80. And we'll get off to the races shortly here. Hope you all had a good day. We had some uh, good family time today, just walking out, walking, uh, went for a bit of a walk together and just hung out me and the kids. Tess is on a run of call here, so um, yeah, we'll get some time with her tomorrow, hopefully. So, hey, Jeanette, blessings to you. Thanks for joining us for worship. Well, let's, uh, you'll hear there's a theme of restoration in the psalm tonight. And so we're going to pray tonight um, a prayer for daily renewal. Hey, Barbara, welcome. Welcome, Marlene, or Marlene, Marilyn and Irene. I mashed up your names. Marilyn and Irene, welcome. Um, yeah, let's take a moment and begin as it is good and wise to begin all things under the care of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, by our baptism into death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you turn us from the old life of sin. Grant that we who are reborn to new life in him may live in righteousness and holiness all our days through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Friends, let's join together as we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I invite you to uh, follow my lead line by line as you are moved. And at the end, it's my delight to share uh, that beautiful, blessed assurance. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know. The thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Amen. Uh, 
usually just before Compline, we're kind of doing bedtime routine. Sometimes if we're getting to bed late, Tessa is praying with the kids and I'm getting set up for Compline. Uh, but tonight we were on the ball a little bit, so we were saying prayers all together. And we generally have a pattern to our prayers where we bless the kids like you've seen me and Zafira do to each other um, under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then we have a bit of a rote prayer that um, I learned from my grandma. Uh, and then we kind of go through a process where we'll say things that we're thankful for and people and things that we're concerned about or want helpful, help for or with. Uh, and then things that we uh, are asking forgiveness for. And this evening when, uh, when I said, Dear Lord, give, we ask your forgiveness um, for times today when we were rude or cross or uh, selfish or careless. Uh, I heard my five-year-old year, five year old just kind of rolled over in his bed and he goes, He always forgives us. <laughs> I was like, uh, I love five-year-olds. They're so fun. But you're not fighting with them. They are full of vim and vigor and yeah. Oh, to be that assured, right, of God's daily forgiveness that we, that it's almost annoying. <laughs> like, we don't even have to say this, Dad. It's so obvious God forgives us. So I hope that you'll know uh, how obvious that is and the delight and the freedom that comes with that to just be who we are in this stage and station of life. Psalm 80. So years ago now, uh, I think it was in the summer of 2012, I was getting ready working on the National Planning Committee. Hey, Carolyn. Welcome, neighbor. Uh, hey, hi, Robin. Blessings to you. Welcome, Rebecca. Um, yeah, so working on the National Planning Committee for a youth conference that year it was going to be in Winnipeg uh, and this was a psalm that I had been given to to work with as uh, part of an event that I was planning it was meant to be as like a on the starting day of the conference we would all get together and rather than sitting down for a big plenary session we wanted to flip the script a bit and stand them all up and send them out and so we took them on like a guided meditation around the conference center uh, in Winnipeg down along the I think the Red River and my geography is not great so forgive me if that's wrong <laughs> uh, but the Winnipeg Convention Center along the river and there was reflection points and um, long and short of it I remembered this psalm tonight and uh, when I got to the what's the refrain of the psalm psalm something that has only ever happened to me once before in my life happened to me and i could just hear um, the music of it and um, one of my regrets is that i don't like i don't have a lot of musical chops and i had even less then and so i kind of tried to see if i could get a couple other people involved with it um, and for whatever reason it just didn't fly and and uh I, I regret that because it was just like a gift, this little song. And uh, it has this, I think, I, at least for me, that's eight years ago, I still remember the tune. And so maybe it wasn't meant for a whole bunch of people. Maybe it was meant as a consolation just for me. But I thought I would uh, sing that refrain for you tonight uh, as we go through Psalm 80. So Psalm 80. So the refrain comes in verse three, and it rep repeats, I think, three times throughout the psalm. It goes like this. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, 
leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine, preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish, at the rebuke of your countenance let them perish. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you, Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. Restore us, O Lord. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. Restore us, God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Hey, Ernestina, buena noche. Good to see you. This thing's Remy. All right, so for our song tonight, uh, we're going to do Kumbaya, uh, but it's a little faster version than the one um, that is the standard. Uh, and so it goes like this. Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. Somebody's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Whoa, somebody's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Kumbaya, kumbaya, somebody's praying, Lord, kumbaya, whoa, somebody's praying, Lord, kumbaya. I'm going to do the part I forgot last time. 
singing rain, storm, fire, wind, kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. Somebody's laughing, Lord, kumbaya. Whoa, somebody's laughing, Lord, kumbaya. Singing rain, storm, fire, wind, kumbaya. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Somebody's living, Lord, kumbaya. Whoa, somebody's living, Lord, kumbaya. Somebody's living, Lord, kumbaya. Whoa, somebody's living, Lord, kumbaya. Singing rain, storm, fire, wind, kumbaya. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Kumbaya, kumbaya. Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. It's been a while since I sang that one, so hopefully I didn't make a mess of it. If you are a current or more recent camp staffer and want to correct me, love to hear from you. <laughs> uh, glad to hear it, Robin. Blessings. Blessings, Aurora. Thanks for joining us to know tonight. <clears throat> Jesus says in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you that are weary, and all that are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And again in John 14, Jesus says, Peace is my parting gift to you, my own peace, such as the world cannot give. Set your troubled hearts at rest, and banish your fears. And Paul in 2 Corinthians says, It is... The God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We sing our responsory. Welcome, Heidi, our blessings. <laughs> your part goes like this. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I command my spirit. Into your hands, I command my spirit. You have redeemed me, O oh Lord God of truth. Into your hands I command my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I command my spirit. Guide us, waking, O Lord, and guard us, sleeping, 
that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Guide us, waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Friends, for what and for whom shall we pray this night? Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Welcome, John and Jane. Blessings to you. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us. Use us, we pray, as you will, but always to your glory and the welfare of your people. O God, full of compassion, we commit and commend ourselves to you, in whom we live and move and have our being. Be the goal of our pilgrimage and our rest along the way. Give us refuge from the turmoil of worldly distractions beneath the shadow of your wings. Let our hearts, so often a sea of restless waves, find peace in you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray this night. <clears throat> With Rose lifting up our friends and neighbors and family members to the south in the United States. Lord, we pray that you would comfort those who suffer, allay the fears of those afflicted, afflict those unwisely unfearful, and grant to your people worthy leaders who would serve the common good more than any individual self-interest, who would consult and engage the variety of gifts and abilities that you've poured out 
over your many people instead of needing to hoard up credit we pray Lord that you would extend your mighty healing hand and protect your people from this virus us to be bold where we must and where we ought and give us grace and wisdom to be careful and cautious where we ought and where we must we lift up also our brothers and sisters in Brazil in India, in Oman and Chad, Bolivia and Peru and Mexico and Ethiopia and the southern and southern Sudan <clears throat> restore us O God let your light shine upon us. Let your face look upon us and we shall be saved. We pray tonight with Carrie and Curtis. Pray with Carrie and her siblings, Lord, as they strive to care give for their father in need of memory care. Lord, grant him patience and peace as he goes through this unsettling season. Grant him a will to stay at home and to stay safe. And we pray with Carrie that you would help the siblings uh, and all who love their dad to be united in that care rather than casting blame or pointing fingers so that they can support one another and do your will. And through them we pray for all of your caregivers, O oh Lord, that you would continue to uphold them and renew their energy, their spirits, their vision for that holy work of tending to those most in need of care. We pray tonight with Joanne for the four members of their complex uh, ailing with chronic health problems, two with cancer and two with other problems. Loving God, your heart overflows with compassion for your whole creation. Pour out your spirit on all people living with illness for which there is no cure, as well as their families and loved ones. Help them to know that you're cl you claim them as your own and deliver them from fear and pain for the sake of Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift up to you Tiffany and Mackenzie, praying especially for the uh, 
the young ones in our midst, searching and seeking and longing to find their way, longing for belonging, for meaning, yearning to find ways to express pain, rejection, sorrow. Lord, show them your face. We know that you see us all the time. You forgive us every time. Restore us, O oh Lord, restore them and all who struggle to see themselves through your eyes. Bring us home, bring us to the root of your loving grace, of your providential and fulfilling love. We pray tonight with Karen for those who struggle with loneliness, depression, or anxiety, especially for those who are already struggling to cope before this pandemic and have now been made uh, more vulnerable, more challenged by these past few months of quarantine and isolation and other worries piled upon the previous ones. Lord, we pray that you would bless the work of the Greater Edmonton Alliance and all who seek to equip uh, friends and neighbors and build coalitions of care in our towns, cities, and provinces. We pray that you would look with favor upon them and provide the means needed in order for that work to continue here in Edmonton, in order for uh, volunteers to be identified in every community and neighborhood that could receive training in mental health first aid and then act as champions for transparency and vulnerability and the de-shaming of struggle and doubt in a way that would unite neighbors and build up stronger communities full of support, full of allyship, so that none would need feel they struggle alone, so that none would lose hope and succumb to self-harm or suicidal thoughts. give you thanks for the way that you so faithfully provide and we pray for grace to see the way in which you answer this prayer and all our prayers we pray today with Heidi giving thanks for amazing friends who always step up to help we give thanks uh, for Heidi's gratitude tonight and the reminder of what a beautiful and freeing discipline, gratitude and generosity uh, are. How they have such power to help us to see a given situation through your eyes, O oh Lord. We thank you for the way that you continuously encourage us using everyday people that you've already sown in our lives. Lord, where we encounter or meet people uh, who seem to be lacking in that, uh, in that way, lacking for friends or supports, help us to be your providence, your encouragement, your prayer answered to someone looking out, crying out in need. We pray tonight with Karen 
for those who watch and wait with elderly parents nearing the end of their lives. Lord, that we would have courage to journey with one another, just as you do, through the highs and lows of life. Not needing to paper over struggles or challenges or sorrows. But willing to accompany so that they need not go alone. give you thanks that your holy presence, O Lord, transfigures even the darkest night, even the scariest ordeal into a holy moment, in a holy place, in your holy presence. Pray tonight with Rebecca. Pray, Lord, that you would help the package uh, that seems, <laughs> and this is true of a lot of packages these days. Lord, your majesty is amazing. Uh, it never ceases to boggle my mind how you can hear all of your children praying to reach out and assure each and every one of us how you have a mind not just on the big important kings and rulers of the world but you're counting hairs and inventorying sparrows so we pray for our sister Rebecca tonight troubled by this little thing uh, longing and wishing for it to arrive. We pray, Lord, that you would give her the assurance uh, that you know where it is and that you will make provision for it to arrive in due time. God of earth and air, water and fire, height and depth, we pray for those who work in danger who rush in to bring hope and help and comfort when others flee to safety, whose mission is to seek and save, serve and protect, and whose presence embodies the protection of the Good Shepherd. Give them caution and concern for one another, so that in safety they may do what must be done. Under your watchful eye, support them in their courage and dedication, that they may continue to save lives and ease pain and mend the torn fabric of lives and social order. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who teaches us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, almighty and merciful God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen. Thanks for joining tonight, everybody. Uh, go in peace, to rest, to sleep. Uh, and sleeping, may you root in the love of your Creator, and so rooted, rise to be of good service tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Rebecca. Good night, Shauna. Thanks for joining us. Good night, Alan.
Good night, Karen and Heidi. Good night, Ruth. Joanne, peace to you. Thank you for being Christ's hands and feet to so many of your neighbors. Blessings, Carrie, as you figure out with your siblings how to best care for your dad. Peace be with you, Rose and Dave. Good night, John and Jane. Blessings, Robin. Peace to you, Aurora. Say hi to Ryan and Andrew and Michael for me. Good night, Ernestina. Buenas noches. Remy, peace be with you, brother. Good night, Carolyn. Good night, neighbor. Good night, Marilyn and Irene. Good night, Barbara. Good night, Jeanette. Good night, Katika. Good night, Joe and Barb. So I was running out of <clears throat> battery last night, so I couldn't read you a story. But uh, Zafira had picked out this one for you. The Wild Washerwomen by John Yeoman and Quinton Blake. This uh, was one of Tessa's favorite stories when she was a girl. And so later on in life, when we were married and had, had Zafira, we went looking on the internet and we found uh, an old copy from a library that would, had been taken out of circulation. So we snapped it up. The Wild Washerwomen. I'm just gonna come a little closer so you can see a little better. The Wild Washerwomen, a new folktale by John Yeoman. I don't know if you can see that. Once upon a time, there were seven washerwomen. Every day, they went down to the river with their baskets of washing on their head. Their names were Dottie, Lottie, Molly, Dolly, Winnie, Minnie, and Ernestine. And they were all good friends. Well, when they got to the river, they sorted out the clothes and plunged them in. They soaked them. They soaked them. They pounded them on the stones. They rinsed them, they wrung them, and they spread them over bushes and rocks to dry. They were the best washerwomen for miles, but they were not happy. The owner of the laundry, Mr. Balthazar Tite, was a very mean and little man, and he kept them working from morning to night. Every morning at the crack of dawn, they had to get up and do the ironing before the day's washing arrived. And when it did arrive in the goat cart, Perkin, the delivery boy, would say, I'm sorry, ladies, but it's much more than ever today. One morning, as the washerwomen stared glumly at the mountain of dirty laundry, they felt that it was really too much. They all sighed as they looked at the filthy sheets, the grubby hankies, horrid socks, grimy nightshirts, messy tablecloths, and ghastly towels. Why don't we just leave it? suggested Ernestine, timidly. Their faces brightened up immediately. What a marvelous idea, chuckled Dolly, flinging a grimy skirt across the room. Why didn't we think of it before, chortled Winnie. And at that, they began to dance. Well, the door burst open, and Mr. Balthazar Tite stepped in with Perkin. Now, now, ladies, he said with a frown, there's work to be done. Then he looked at the great mound of laundry on the floor. Wonderful, he said. There's more than ever. 
This made Minnie so angry that she shouted, Let them have it, girls! And the seven washerwomen pushed the mountain of laundry until it collapsed on top of Mr. Balthazar tight. While he was struggling to get free, the seven washerwomen raced out of the laundry and into the yard. They piled into the empty goat cart, and Dottie grabbed the reins. Giddy up, Lysander, she cried to the goat. And the washerwomen were so excited by their escape that they drove the cart right through the town pond, splashing the clean clothes of the passers-by with muddy water. After that, there was no stopping them. They rode to the marketplace where they overturned the stalls and set the animals loose. They stopped in orchards and climbed the trees to help themselves to the farmer's fruit. They raced through the hat shops and snatched the hats. They ran into churches and alarmed the local people by swinging on the bell ropes and making a terrible noise. The washerwomen were having so much fun that they didn't want it to end. And so day after day, they went on the rampage. And, and all that washing had made the washerwomen very strong. And so the people who tried to stop them, well, they didn't have a chance. You see, she's bending the gun in half. Suplexing the mirror. Everyone was terrified of them. Each village built a watchtower so that a village could, villagers could shout, Look out! The wild washerwomen are coming! When their goat cart came into sight. Now, in a hut in the forest lived seven woodcutters. They chopped down trees and floated them down the river to the town. And when they heard that the seven washerwomen were coming, they just laughed. We'll see who's afraid, they said. We'll prepare a surprise for them. And the woodcutters decided to make themselves as ugly and as frightening as possible. They tangled their hair and matted their beards. They smeared mud and soot all over their hands and faces and clothes. And they practiced making blood-curdling cries. Soon, the seven washerwomen came rattling up the mountain path in their goat cart. As they turned a corner, there in front of them was a terrifying sight. The sander stopped in his tracks, and even the wild washerwomen were about to run away. But then Minnie realized that they were looking at the dirtiest and grubbiest things that they'd ever seen in their lives. Come on, girls, she shouted. Remember, you're washerwomen. And so they leapt out of their cart and grabbed hold of those woodcutters. They plunged them in the river. They soaked them and squeezed them and pounded them on the stones. They rinsed them and wrung them and laid them out to dry. By the time they had finished, the woodcutters had never looked so clean and shining, and the washerwomen felt quite proud of their work. In fact, now they could see the woodcutters without their soot and mud. They really rather liked the look of them. So the washerwomen never went back to work for Mr. Balthazar Tite. They married the woodcutters, who built them some new log huts to live in. And after that, people who traveled along the mountain path would see them, all happily washing and woodcutting and having the time of their lives. The End